The legend of the CF-105 Arrow has grown with the passing of time. There are numerous myths and inaccurate claims, mostly on the internet, associated with the Avro Arrow. The complete destruction of the airframes, systems, tooling, etc. has helped to perpetuate these myths and inaccurate information. Comparing the Arrow to the F-35 Lightning reveals the sophistication of the original program. The following documentary is intertwined with an existing RCAF mission that cannot be adequately fulfilled with current fighter aircraft. Through the center of Canada exists a bomber gap between Bagotville, Quebec and Cold Lake, Alberta. Fighter design can be thought of in terms of generations. The first generation of jets were those developed in the Second World War and in the early 1950s. This slide illustrates the evolution of fighter jets through the decades. Today's latest fighter jets are known as fifth-generation aircraft and those currently on the drawing boards for the future will be sixth-generation aircraft. The Avro Arrow was a second-generation fighter design with the characteristics as seen in this slide. Primarily designed as an interceptor. Its design encompassed a new and sophisticated Mach 2 Plus supersonic airframe design, sophisticated integrated avionics, a new armament design of four beyond visual range guided missiles and the groundbreaking Orenda PS-13 Iroquois turbojet. Common design characteristics of today's fifth generation fighter aircraft are seen in this slide. The Arrow had a narrow frontal cross-section giving it some stealth attributes, but overall too large to be stealthy. Designed as an interceptor to operate at high altitudes, maneuverability was not the primary requirement, but the very large wing allowed for significant g-force at higher altitudes, putting its ability to hold a turn equal to or greater than an F-15 at higher altitudes. The planned avionics for the Arrow were very sophisticated for the day and mirror today's requirements. Although network data fusion was a future concept, the Arrow was designed to work within NORAD's semi-automated ground environment SAGE control system, a primitive form of network data fusion. The Arrow's potted weapons bay allowed for multi-role capability. In all other aspects as we will see and further explore, the Arrow had virtually all the same design characteristics as a fifth generation fighter as depicted in this slide. Here is a comparison of performance characteristics for the F-35A, Lightning II, and the Avro Arrow, Mark II. The impact of the more fuel efficient turbofan engine in the F-35A is apparent. Avro Canada was one of the very first aircraft companies to integrate human factors engineering into the design process. 
These included various mock-ups and other approaches to ensure the best layouts and ergonomics. U.S. General Joseph Kaidara called the Aero cockpit design the best he had ever seen. Avro Canada made extensive use of a new material known as titanium for significant portions of both the aircraft structure and engines. This required cutting-edge technology and machining in order to be successful. Avro Canada was also using metal composites in their design. The Aero design incorporated many sophisticated aerodynamic features that were thoroughly tested in wind tunnels and on scale models that were powered into flight by rocket motors, all while providing in flight data telemetry about the test model flight itself. The Aero made use of a drooped leading edge with an aerodynamic twist on the wing. The leading edge of the Aero wing was drooped approximately 8 degree inboard and 4 degree outboard. This was done to increase the maneuver margins and to eliminate any buffeting by preventing leading edge airflow breakaway at high angles of attack. The arrow had an elegantly simple leading edge notch and a leading edge extension about midspan on the wing. The purpose of the notch and the extension was to control the span wise flow of the boundary layer air, characteristic of all swept wing aircraft. This was necessary to eliminate early flow separation, stalling of the wing tips and the aerodynamic center shifting forward and producing pitch up. A great deal of theoretical work was done on the application of area rule drag reduction to the Arrow. The Arrow was the first aircraft to be developed using an early form of computational fluid dynamics with an integrated lifting body type of theory. Computational fluid dynamics are an integral part of the fighter aircraft design process today. The Arrow was the first aircraft to incorporate fly-by-wire with artificial feedback. The Arrow flying control system was a fully powered, irreversible, artificial fuel control system. There were three modes of operation, a normal mode, an automatic mode, and an emergency mode. In the normal mode, a damping system provided stability augmentation for all three axes, and coordinated rudder movement with movement of the ailerons and elevators. Artificial fuel was provided by an electrical system in such a way that stick force required was made to feel proportional to the amount of G's pulled. The Arrow was the first fighter aircraft to have marginal stability designed into the pitch axis for better maneuverability, speed and altitude performance. It also had negative stability designed into the yaw axis to save weight, cut drag and boost performance. Negative stability was not seen on a fighter again until the F-16 and F-18. The Arrow was the first fighter aircraft designed to be data link flyable from the ground.
The Arrow was the first aircraft designed to have major components machined by CNC. Avro manufacturing capabilities included a huge metal-to-metal -metal autoclave, a special heat-treating furnace, and a significant amount of heavy machinery equipment including a 15,000-ton rubber pad forming press, which, at the time, was the largest of its kind in the world. The Arrow was the first ever aircraft to use a very sophisticated 4,000 pounds per square inch hydraulic system to allow lighter and smaller components. Contemporary designs were using 1,500 or 2,000 pounds per square inch systems at the most. The Arrow was the first aircraft designed with a digital computer being used for both aerodynamic analyses as well as designing the internal structure. Avro Canada leased and installed an IBM 704 electronic data processing machine computer complete with a staff of 30 mathematicians, technicians and operators to support the Arrow program. The Arrow design made full use of a flight simulator as seen here in the design and training of the test pilots. It was rudimentary by today's standards, but ultimately proved to be effective in the design process. The Aero design made full use of a flight test control room receiving in-flight data telemetry as seen here. This mirrors today's approach to flight testing. The Arrow was the first fighter designed with integrated navigation, weapons release, automatic search and track radar, data link inputs, home on jamming, infrared detection, and electronic countermeasures all operating through a computer within the Astro Weapon System design. The integration of ground mapping radar with the radar altimeter into the flight control system would have allowed for strike reconnaissance roles while still being an air superiority fighter at the same time. The design of the weapons bay would have allowed the planned use of a selection of BVR missiles, both radar and infrared guided missiles. The large internal palletized weapons bay would have also allowed the carriage of other stores or cameras as seen in these diagrams. These diagrams show the planned use of a selection of BVR missiles, both radar and infrared guided, for the Arrow, compared to that of the F-35. Here we see the F-35 at near full afterburner with the Arrow yet to use its afterburners. At any given time based on fuel load, the Arrow would be approximately 700 miles per hour faster than the F-35.
the Oran Iroquois engine. This was a very sophisticated turbojet engine design. It used a variable pitch stator to improve throttle response and to increase resistance to compressor stalls or engine flameouts. The design made extensive use of titanium for high strength, high temp tolerance, low weight and a high proportion of accessory machinery, pumps, gearbox drives, etc., that were internally mounted to reduce overall size and improve efficiencies. The engine had a combat thrust to weight ratio approaching 1 to 1 which was phenomenal for its day. The Oran Iroquois engine was the first to use only 10 compressor sections in a two-shaft design. The competition of that era was typically using 17. It was the first engine to have only two main bearing assemblies on a two-shaft design, a transonic first stage compressor on a turbojet engine, an oxygen injection relight system, a hot streak type of afterburner ignition. It was the first engine to have a fully variable afterburner, instead of the customary one or two stage afterburner designs providing more efficient thrust and fuel economy.